Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brewers. Hey, Brewer fans. Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast number 23. Uh, joining us this evening, or whenever you're listening to this, is Scott Bartell, Ben Travato, and... I believe that's all. Hey, guys. Hey, Craig. Hey. Hey, Scott. Hey, is uh, is Chad on? I thought he was going to be here, no? He's usually the first one on. Yeah, Craig, did you talk to Chad? Or is he uh, coming on the show, or what's going on? I texted him the time that we were going to do it, and he just said something about... He, I don't know. Some kind of phrase that I have not heard of before, something... I don't know. He's busy, I guess. I don't know. He just said, I'm going to be rubbing one house. Huh. So yeah, I assume he's busy grading papers or something like that. I don't know. He might be in a softball league. Like, he might have been running one out. Like, Yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. probably running. That makes a lot more a, sense. He does, he does a lot for America's youth, so it's got to be something to do with that. Yeah, so. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. We, we're not we. Deeper in the summer, close to all-star break, the Brewer, your Milwaukee Brewers are still in first place due to the fact that we did finish a 3-3 three and three week of uh, being in this homestand. But uh, the positive part of that is we took two or three from the Cubs. Um, and here we go. Um, as we press on, um, Eric Thames is back. Hit a couple home runs in the Sunday last game uh, for the taping. And the boys are hanging in there. Obviously, I'm inspired by the play of Lorenzo Keane and Kristen Yards. Both have been pretty much our two best players on the team. Ryan Braun, uh, whenever he's on the field, uh, I guess every other day or something like that. Seems kind of like a show of his former self. So, um, all in all, and as we already know, there's a couple of other offensive positions in black hole. So, um, those two guys are really scored during the offseason and our bullpen, which has held up for quite a long time is showing a little bit of signs of um, basically of being mortal, so to speak. Um, and beyond that, I, somehow our rotation continues to hold up as well uh, as we wait for some guys to get back from injury and whatnot. Um, I guess what are your overall thoughts in the past week, guys? And also from, from this point forward for the Milwaukee Brewers this year. I'd like to throw out a uh, kudos. Uh, we try to do a kudos each uh, each episode here. I'd like to throw out a kudos this week to uh, to Julius Chassin. I think he has pitched out Canning. Um, he had a few rough starts to start the year, and you know, you, you, I, I don't think any of us really knew what we were going to get. He was at other points in his career kind of a middling starter, and you know, one could argue that maybe he's, he's really supposed to be slotted into a fourth or fifth role in a rotation. But boy, has he pitched lights out? Um, this uh, this past couple couple of weeks and really much of the last month, um, I think that he has been a really um, underrated component of our starting rotation. So I, I just like to say kudos to to, Jul- to Julius Chassin. I think that he's been an outstanding addition, a very underrated addition from Stearns. Well, absolutely. I mean, um, my apologies to him because I thought that he was not this good, and glad now that he's wearing a Milwaukee Brewers. Once you put on that Milwaukee Brewer uniform, these starting pitchers, their ears just start to plummet, which is great, I guess. I didn't feel like that <laughs> when I was a kid. Except, but, except for, yeah, or, or last year um, with Matt Garza. Or, oh, you know, yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but no, the fact of the matter is the uh, most Brewer fans were waiting, you know, checking, for, you know, the internet daily to see the Brewers uh, sign uh, the big starting pitchers like you, Darvish, Shake your at a, Alex Cobb or even like Lance Flynn, um, hoping that we'd sign one of those guys. Well, Julio's just seen who since picked out the free agent bargain bin, so to speak, uh, a short tier deal and affordable, has outpitched all those guys, basically. Um, it's great. It's and, absolutely know, crazy. Yeah. I, it, it's it's absolutely crazy. It. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And that's, and that's obviously been such a, a key component of his success. I mean, when we've had an injury uh, a rotation that's already been racked by injuries to Jimmy Nelson and 
Zach Davies is still out, and, and uh, Craig's favorite, Wade Miley, is out still. And we had uh, uh, Chase Anderson was on the disabled list for a while this season. It's uh, it's just amazing that guys like Junior Guerra and um, Julius Chastain have been able to step up the way that they have and keep this team as of this taping still in first place. Yeah, and he uh, just actually, uh, well, uh, seconds after this taping started, he just took a uh, tough luck loss, uh, six and a third, and just gave up the one run. Um, I know uh, it looks like the Brewers were trying to do something a little cute, and they tried to dress up like Bob Euchre. Um, so they all tried to do Bob Euchre impersonations before uh, getting on the flight and going out to Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, it looks like it carried over because they're hitting like him. Um, only two hits tonight. Yep. Oh boy. Yep, not a good way to start the series um, uh, in Pittsburgh. Isn't that our that's our first game against Pittsburgh this year, isn't it, guys? We haven't played him yet this season, have we? Um, I, I think we may have played him at home. You can't spring oh, these things on me, Vince. I I'm not prepared for things like to answer questions about. Well, you have Scott. You have you have four interns that are working for you at Great Man Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, right now that you can probably ask for assistance with these sort of stats. I can't remember if we played them at home or not. Um, well, Scott, the last time you asked your intern for stats um, on the last Pirates series, and she said something like the Brewers took only one of three and they scored four points or something like that. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if she knows what a run is, Scott, but I'm not sure what kind of seedy um, establishment out there in Vegas you're finding me in terms of, but uh, anyway. Um, okay. Well, well if, I guess if you we'll give Cassidy that... a, little bit, a, little bit, a little bit longer release this time. Number one, okay. Jaquanda watches a lot more basketball than um, baseball, so that's a pretty honest mistake for her. Um, and she did point out that uh, in May, uh, the beginning of May, we had the uh, Pirates at home for three, and we lost two out of three. Yeah, I see it now, guys. That's right. Uh, yep, we're one in uh, three now against Pittsburgh on the year, which unfortunately continues uh, uh, kind of a weird trend. The Brewers are – uh, winning a lot of games outside the division, but right now, um, in turn, can get this to me a little bit quicker. But um, we are 11 and six against the National League East, and we are 14 and 16 against the National League Central, and 11 and two against the National League West. Hmm. So yeah, uh, and um, I don't it's, know, a, it's, I mean, a, it's a bad trend. The, the losing our division. The NL, I think, seems like a wide open race. Um, if we look back on our predictions, are basically pretty universally thought of as going this season that each division kind of has a clear cut favorite in the NL. Uh, the East, I think, the Nationals were picked to win yeah. that, and the Central, the Cubs, almost hands down, and on uh, the West, I think the Dodgers almost hands down. None of those three teams, I believe, at this kind of state are in first place. Even though I'm not sure what the Nationals did tonight, but um, yeah, basically. Uh, however, all those teams are now on the heels of teams that are in first, the first being one, of course. Um, I think just kind of going back to reality a little bit, thinking of the Brewers not being at all, because kind of similar to last year, we're hoping they will, but I'm starting to try to identify the teams the Brewers will stay in content with if they do enter more so the wild card race. And I think, you know, you're, you're looking at, um, you know, you know the Diamondbacks, the Braves, the Cardinals in our own division, and also a team we just lost two or three of at home, the Phillies, uh, who are in a similar state of building with us. And, um, you know, the Phillies and the Cardinals, we have, this week we have a four-game series at home against the Cardinals that I think is just as big as last week's Cubs series at home. Um, Brewers have got to beat these teams. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? No, definitely, Craig. I think you hit it on the head. I mean, I, I think it's a huge problem when you've got a losing record in your own division. Um, obviously, going head-to-head against teams like the, the Cubs and the Cardinals is incredibly important when you're going to be competing against those teams for either uh, the division crown or the wild card, uh, either way, because it, it, with the uh, matchups, like you said, we're, we're going to be competing, I think, at least against the Cubs, if not the Cardinals, for the wild card. 
um, you know, along with some other teams in the other divisions. But it's essential that we start winning more games against the National League Central. We have a, a lot of games still remaining against Pittsburgh, um, a lot of games still remaining against the Cubs. I, you know, it's, it's really important that we start winning within our division. It was nice to take two or three from Chicago. Um, but, you know, that's a home series, and you're kind of expected to do that. And uh, for the Brewers to really compete and win this division, we're going to have to do it pretty much every series from here on out against teams in our own division, I think. Well, and not only that, but remember uh, what we were something like, uh, I don't know, like eight and one or something like that against the Reds. I mean, you take that away, my God, I mean, think how bad our division right. record would be at that point. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And I don't think that we're as bad as our, what is it, three and eight overall record against the Cubs. I think that we're, um, you know, pure talent wise, we're probably a game or two behind the Cubs, but we're not playing like that against other teams. But you, you know, you have to, you have to figure that hopefully our luck turns around against the Cubs uh, throughout the second half of the season. So um, hopefully that improves. But you can't bank on a, you know, eight and one record against the Reds either. So it's 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 going to even out uh, in the second half, I think. Um, another thing I'll just point out. Um, and somewhat breaking news. Um, I know that everyone on, uh, you know, on the Brewer Nation are trying to say, hey, the Brewers are going to be contenders. Where a couple of weeks from the All Star break, the Brewers are still in first place. Will Stearns, you know, still a little bit more in the trade market this uh, training season, which basically is coming up here in July. Of course, uh, the end of the train deadline is at the end of July for fans that are aware of that. Um, are the Brewers possibly going to make a move early, you know, um, or are they going to wait things out? Um, I, I think, if nothing else, the Brewers should feel like they're, we're going to be in contention for a, at least a wild card. I, I, it's hard for me to envision us between now and then is like completely falling out of contention, not doing something. So it may be to say, hey, why not do something early just so that we can, you know, stay above water, so to speak, or continue our winning ways. The Nationals just went out and traded um, – as breaking news, they just traded for the Royals, Kelvin Herrera. Yep. Uh, basically, they're, they're, um, and gave up two of their top 11 prospects to it, uh, again, kind of at the back of the list. So it's, it's not a huge haul, but it's kind of like a strike early thing. The Nationals who have been trying to climb back in the first place much of the season after they kind of got off, stumbled out of the gate, so to speak, have done that with pretty awesome rotation and some great young players on that team. I think talent-wise, the Nationals blow the Brewers straight out of the water on pure talent. The Brewers, though, with just a dominating bullpen and guys that get on base and don't strike out, and I, I, you know, I guess that's been our formula, great defense and you know, just an unbelievable shutdown bullpen, and starters have done just enough. Um, it, it's a, a little bit worrisome to uh, to think about, uh, you know, keeping keeping pace with, that, with teams like the Nationals, especially if they're already making moves. What are your guys' thoughts on whether or not Stern should do something sooner rather than later when it comes to the trade deadline being less than six weeks away? Well, I mean, my – go ahead, Scotty. I, I was going to say, first off, uh, before I even get into that, I guess we're only 5-1 and one against the Reds, so I may have overshot it a little bit with 8-1. But, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I just kind of look at it, and I'm like, what do you – what do you want this team to, to do? You know, I mean, um, second base is, you know, obviously an issue. Catcher is an issue. Um, shortstop is an issue. But uh, I don't really see like a, you know, like a silver bullet out there that we're going to be able to get um, someone to come in and, and, and write the ship with any of those. I'm, it would be nice to, you know, have some kind of an ace. You, I guess you hope that I, I, I if we're going to update the starting rotation, I don't want to wait around for Jimmy Nelson and see what Jimmy Nelson we get the 2017 Jimmy Nelson or every other year of Jimmy Nelson. So um, I guess that that's the only thing that you're looking at, but do you really want to break the bank with something like that already? Uh, I mean, as a small market, that's rough. Yeah. And, and you're still without that too, Scott, you're still not addressing offensive needs. I mean, I, I think you hit it on the head. We're, we're still lacking offensively at several key positions. I, you know, even though Arcia is a great defender, we still are not getting even a 200 batting average out of our shortstop right now. Um, second base seems to be kind of okay with VR at times. I mean, he's not the worst hitter on the team anymore, but at the same time, you could definitely upgrade there. And 
uh, our catching situation. I like Manny Pena a lot, and Eric Kratz has served in admirably since we acquired him a few weeks ago. Um, but at the same time, I, there's a, there are definite upgrades out there. A lot of talk has, has been about JT Realmuto from the Marlins. Um, you know, we've talked on this show about Jonathan Lucroy from the A's and bringing him back to Milwaukee. There are upgrades that are available, potentially available, um, on the trade market. So I think it just becomes a matter of how many prospects the Brewers are willing to give up in a uh, quote-unquote go-for-it type of year or go-for-it situation. Eric Sogard yeah. 123 through 81 at-bats this year. I'm feeling someone like Manny Machado would be an upgrade over Sogard. I don't know. <laughs> just bit. Bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I, throwing it out there. I tend to agree. <laughs> no, I mean, I think other Brewer fans, a team like the what is it, white flag, whatever. <laughs> One of the flags or all the flags uh, that they're done for the season pretty much. Uh, and so you look at their starting pitchers, uh, of course, always injury prone, but some really nice young controllable arms there. Syndergaard and DeGroff, even some like the Matt. And, you know, the, I think there have to be real Brewer fans that the cost of those guys would be really high. I mean, I don't think we just throw a bunch of prospects and get either any of those guys. I think it's going to take young and controllable major league talent as well as prospect to land someone like a controllable ace like that. So I mean if I if I'm the Mets in that scenario, Craig, I'm asking for for not only our prospects, like you said, I would I would probably start with Keston Hira, Corey Ray, and then Josh Hayer. I if I'm if I'm the Mets, that's that's probably my initial asking point for either one of those guys. Yeah, and that's the problem. I mean, I don't really want to um, – well, I guess I don't want to part with <laughs> Hera and I don't want to part with Hayter, and uh, uh, I, I guess I'll even – other than that, I guess it's, you know, fire sale. Like anybody in our, um, in our minor leagues is totally fine at that point. So, I don't know. I mean, we're going to have to give up a ton to get a guy like that, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but, man, I, with – the injury records that, that those guys have had, um, I, I'm not, I'm not sold on that. And I, and I'm not sold that that's even where Stearns is looking at this point. You know, it seems to me like one scenario that could be a, a little bit more realistic is that Stern starts looking at, and I, again, I think we talked about this about a month ago on a podcast, but maybe starts looking at, at guys that are veterans in the last year of their contract from teams that are no longer contending uh, you look at Oakland and just throwing it out there, but a guy like Jed Bowery or um, maybe Minnesota with Brian Dozier, guys that are guys that are out there on teams that are no longer contending where a lot of the trade value for the opposing team or for the trading partner could come through us picking up some salary. Well, and you mentioned Jed Lowry, and if a guy like Jed Lowry comes in, all of a sudden, um, you know, Sogard's probably not on the team anymore. Hernan Perez is wondering if he's still on the team. Um, Arcia might be able to take an extended stay in the minors. I mean, there's he, he plays so many different positions. I, I feel like Jed Lowry is a total Stearns guy in that regard. But, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of versatility there. And, you know, it's not just about Jed Lowry, but, Craig, you mentioned uh, Manny Machado a few minutes ago. And, and what does a team like Baltimore want for a guy like that? You know, obviously he's incredibly valuable. There's definitely going to be a bidding war once he's on the market. And – um, you're going to have to give up some prospects. That being said, the Orioles know that they're very unlikely to re-sign him after the season. So, you know, could you could you perhaps have a better deal with a team like Baltimore that um, is looking to shed some salary? They're obviously not going anywhere this year. Um, by picking him up instead of focusing on, you know, guys like DeGrom or Syndergaard from the Mets who have a few years left on their contract, it would definitely be a ton of a prospect haul that they would receive for – for either one of those guys. So I don't know. I, I, I definitely have faith in Stearns to be creative and to try to find, um, you know, unique uh, packages that he could, he could send to, to, to I guess, eat teams in, in several different scenarios. But I really tend to think he's going to go after very short-term guys. And we saw that he did that a little bit at the deadline last year with guys like Anthony Schwarzak and Neil Walker, who were both uh, free agents after the season. And, and even Jeremy Jeffers, who we ended up resigning as well. 
Yeah, and there was a little bit of that like supply and demand kind of numbers game thing going on like in the offseason with second base where, you know, guys like Neil Walker couldn't even find jobs or anything like that. And it turns out based on this year that maybe that made sense. But um, the biggest problem is that Machado, you know, he could he could still play short. He could play third. So uh, it's not like you know, there's going to be contenders that are going to be looking for services and as long as there's other contenders out yeah. there. That they're, you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay a pretty penny. So. Yeah, and, and, and teams that are contending, like Seattle, definitely have a has a hole right now at second base with Robinson Cano being injured. So, yeah, there's definitely contending teams that are going to be in the market for, uh, unfortunately, guys in the same position, both up the middle and in the starting rotation, I think that we are. Well, he's injured, but he also uh, gets to take a 50-game – it's 50 games, right? <laughs> I, try, I, I was trying to be kind, but, yeah, he's uh, – He's going to be out for for most of the, or if not all this year, uh, between the injury and the suspension. But um, you know, just the point of being a, a contending team and the Mariners uh, went into this year thinking that Robinson Cano was going to be a major component in their offense, and now he's out for you know essentially all season. And um, they're certainly going to be on the market for a second baseman, I think. Apparently, oh hey guys, my connection's back. Uh, by the way, this podcast is being brought to you by Sprint. The cell phone company that allows you they only have five drop calls a week, so hey, un- unfortunately, that. unfortunately, you were still cutting out, so I kind of stepped all over to your tagline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell, I'm it, still it cutting good, out. It was a good yeah. run. No, we we got you, Craig. We're all right. We're all right. You didn't hear any of that? I I heard like every third word or every other word. It's pretty good. Are you still yeah, only hearing every three words? No, oh, we're 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 great. Yeah, we're doing well. Yeah. Damn it! Don't anyway, worry. I'm, I'm right. sure the 20 people that listen to this a week aren't going to be mad. And we can have our intern do the editing. We're fine. Don't worry. I don't know if I can call him for more. All right. Well, anyway, um, is there a payphone at the Taco Bell that you're at, Craig? You could just call from there. Are you getting a chicken quesadilla uh, or the barbecue chicken? Um, Chipotle chicken. I haven't decided Ooh. yet, Scott, but oh. save that for the I call my drop out when I get up to the window. I did DJ a wedding this past weekend and the bride and groom uh revealed that they met at a Taco Bell parking lot. So that was very wow. endearing to me. A lot of romance. Yeah, those, those uh, Taco Bells are very romantic locations for first dates and mm. meeting people and yeah. Which oh, um amazing. Uh, which county park did they get married in? <laughs> yep. So, I have a feeling um, that. Yeah, go ahead, Craig. Oh, my God. No, no. Oh, what bar was the reception in? Can you say that? <laughs> what bar? <laughs> um, actually, I just needed a wedding. It was a different one, believe it or not, at the Ice House by Miller Park. Nice. We went there uh, wow. skipping out of work year, years ago. That was awesome. That was a fun time. I think uh, Rafael Ruiz blamed it on, quote, tire trouble. Um, but we couldn't get back to the office very quickly. Oh, that was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about setting my uh, computer on my playlist that auto autoplay for the rest of the night and just taking a shuttle over to Miller Park. It would have been smart. We're going to come back and finish, finish setting off the music for the drunk people. But anyway. Uh, yep. Yeah. Would have been smart. I heard uh, I was listening in on most of you guys after I got back in. Uh, yeah, I was kind of talking about Manny Machado. The Brewers. I mean, uh, here's what I'll say as far as the, the, you know, kind of a precursor of what I think Stern will do based on this trade deadline, based on what he's done in the past and what his kind of mo is. I think that if you look at the Brewers, their offense is actually more of a problem than their pitching at this point, and I think he's going to address that because at the trade deadline. There are te- these teams that are out of it that are mo- uh, you can basically just acquire offensive talent way cheaper than you can yeah. young controllable ace type starters and so I think he's going to go that route and get by with these guys he came in the season uh, with uh, so he's not as concerned with getting ace level pitchers as unfortunately I and a lot of other Brewer fans are uh, I think his, so I hope that changes at some point but for now I I, I think he's going to mostly focus on that. And kind of some of these underrated guys. Uh, well, he know he knows that there's more offensive players available. Number one, and I think number two that you know with the bullpen being as solid as it has been for 
you know, the first few months of the 2018 season, he knows that any competent starter that can go even five innings, um, you've got a number of guys that can bridge that gap then for the rest of the game. So, I mean, it seems like he's kind of, he's kind of being a, a GM looking to acquire for the team that he actually has on the field, which I think is smart. You know, it's uh it's kind of a win now mentality in some weird ways, but I think that there's actually a method to that madness too. Yeah. Uh, well, for instance, the two last two years the Brewers made the playoffs and under Doug, uh, back in the Brewers review, Haiti, of course, uh, under Doug Melvin as a GM, they quote unquote went for it by acquiring these ace starting pitchers back in 2008. CC Sabathia, he, he got us to the wild card championship. In 2011, obviously, uh, we acquired Zach Granke and he got us to the the NL championship game. Uh, but, um, you know, if Melvin was a GM right now and we were in first place come July 20 something, um, I believe Melvin would target a guy this season, just throwing it out there. Someone like Cole Hamels, who the Rangers are out of it. Uh, Cole Hamels is due, I think, 10, 10 plus million this year. And I think he's got a 12 option for another, I think it's 12 million or something like that. Uh, his contract, so he could probably be had for fairly cheap. We'd have to give up something for him, obviously, but uh, because of his contract uh, cost, I, you know, he would be someone who Melvin would target if we were quote unquote going to go for it. Uh, I think Stern's entire philosophy has changed uh, over Melvin. For a small market team, I'm not sure if that's super wise because I think um, the Brewer, as a small market team, the Brewers are really going to have pockets of window when they have to try to make a class. I don't think we'll, we'll have to see if Stern's successfully going to make us an annual contender, then that'll be great, but um, it'll definitely be a change from what we're used to as Brewer fans uh, and, and what the reality is of a small market team trying to compete. Um, you know, I, I see something more of like what the Royals did, you know, where they you know, when they had Lorenzo came back then and, and, and they, um, you know, had a couple of runs at the World Series, and they won one of them, and then all of a sudden now they completely had to get stripped down, and now they have to go into full rebuilding mode. I, I think really I, I envision the Brewers having success that way and not becoming like the next Atlanta Braves where we're contending every single year and every once in a while we might go all the way or something like that. I, I don't know, you know. Um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that, but I think we're going to have to kind of wrap up this episode fairly quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, there, one, one quick difference, Craig, is that, you know, when Doug Melvin was the GM of the Brewers, we were operating under a different collective bargaining agreement. So when we got a guy like Cece Sabathia, in theory at least, the Brewers should have acquired a draft pick for uh, his, his loss via free agency to the Yankees following the season, where as I know it didn't really work out that way, but um, typically that's how it was in 2008, whereas today, if we acquire a guy at midseason and he leaves us via free agency, we no longer acquire those picks. So essentially, we truly are just getting those couple months uh, of services for that guy, and that could be a good strategy. But it's just that is something else to keep in mind that is a difference in 2018 versus you know 2008. That's a good point, Vince. I, I know right, our, our, our our anonymous source, Tom Carter, was was really concerned about who we might get as a uh, replacement for losing CC to the Yankees and. Uh, didn't work out well in the 2009 draft for us because the Yankees signed both him and Mark Teixeira. But, um, you know, in theory, we should have gotten somebody better on the source. Tom Carter was all over that one. Yeah, I was thinking I, I think uh, after this episode, oh, uh, Vince, you may, have, you may want to, like, Google anonymous source and what that means or even what the word anonymous means. I'm not sure if you're really aware. Um, anyway, uh, but uh, this upcoming – how much time we got, Scotty? Oh, all kinds of time. Actually, yeah, I was going to say, since you guys brought up Cole Hamels, um, what was it? Just a couple weeks ago. Um, actually, now I want to see who these guys were even talking about. It was something ridiculous. All right, well, while you're working on that, should I throw out our upcoming schedule this week? We can just quick throw out the production. I'll get those out of the way before we're under done here. Um, this coming week, the Brewers, uh, well, I have a feeling we're going to not start the week off very well against the Pirates. But anyway, we've got three games against the Pirates and four at home on the road, I should, should mention, and four at home against the Cardinals. So seven games this week. I think we're going to go undefeated. I mean, I think we're going to go 7-0. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say uh, three and might four. might be slightly I'm gonna, op- optimistic. I'm going to say three and four, unfortunately. I'm going to try to be optimistic and say four and three. Um, I was going to mention, just because you guys were talking about a little bit, um, as 
far as like acquiring an ace or whatever. Um, they were throwing around on Twitter and somehow we got involved with, um, oh, should we be looking at Chris Archer? And we were like, oh, yeah, that's great. But uh, the other two names I threw out were Cole Hamels and, you know, if you want to even pony up even more, Madison Baumgartner. I think they're both only signed uh, this year and next year. So, you know, if that's the one of the windows you're looking for, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think. I, yeah, I don't know how we met. The Giants aren't free in Baumgartner. I, I hate to say it. It's like Kershaw's a free agent technically at the end of this year, too. I mean, he's hurt right now. But even if he's healthy, are you seriously thinking the Dodgers are going to consider trading Lane Kershaw? Answer, no. Whether Are the Giants trading and has not gone Baumgartner? Answer, absolutely not. Well, um, I don't know. They might have to go full rebuild, though. I mean – They've done it before, and they tanked hard, and then they came back with a vengeance. So I'm not completely ruling yeah. that. But, yeah, Kershaw, obviously, that's not going to happen. Well, I think Bowman is some, on a similar level for as far as the face of the franchise. That if they did trade him, they would have to get massively blown away with an offer. And uh, I don't think Bumgarner has been healthy enough for a team to make that kind of risk. But you never know. Uh, if, if, sure. the Giants, um, if the Giants will see that they're not really going to be in it this year and they're not going to – probably be in it next year and they realize that they've got a couple of years to rebuild. I mean, that would be a chip that they could use to really restock the farm. I I haven't looked at the Giants too much to see where we match up with them in terms of uh um, you know, potential trade, but it could be an, it could be an interesting scenario. Yeah, if the Brewers have an opportunity to trade for Bumgarner, I should think they should uh, definitely explore that uh for sure. Scott, how many Twitter followers do we have right now? Um, at this moment, we have 92 followers. Yep. I'm going to throw, throw this out there because I know, I know that your interns have been working hard. Uh, not necessarily getting Twitter followers, but really something for you. But anyway, uh, we have been getting more Twitter followers somehow, and we're up to 92, like you mentioned. I want to throw this out there. For whoever becomes, I would like all the listeners right now, if you haven't become a, mem- or a follower of us on Twitter, uh, go ahead and check us out. Group Review 1. Or at Brook Review One on Twitter, and for those for whoever is our hundredth um, follower on Twitter, you will receive a free DVD copy of Brook Review the movie. Wow, look at that! That's a great prize for somebody. I know that it was selling at Walmart uh, off the shelves for a little bit in 2016, but uh, this is a great opportunity for somebody to save uh, at least four bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know how we would actually determine who the hundredth one is, but well, it would just be it would just be when it clicks to one hundred, Scott. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not like we're monitoring it twenty four seven, and if it says like, oh, three people are following you now, we wouldn't know which of the three was the hundredth. Well, you are from, monitoring it twenty four seven, actually. Scott, you you add where you were before, so if you're ninety seven followers and you get four, you know that the third one on that list is the one hundredth. Yeah, but do we know that they're going to be in that specific? <sighs> I mean, Will you check I'm going to ask minutes, our anonymous source, Tom Carter. I'm going to see if he can figure this yeah, out. Yeah, ask, ask Tom. The interns are monitoring this 24-7. You know that that's their job. So it's pretty clear to me we, we know who it is. So, um, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna mail Tom Carter one, too, since we've, you know, not ever listened to him, and I can't feel bad about that. Uh, Scott, can you give out his anonymous address uh, to me, please? I have no uh, idea. So I can send the DVD. Oh, it's one brewer's uh, way. <laughs> so, so oh, he like, there we go. I was does he live in, he, he didn't lives, want you to say that. He lives up at Bernie's uh, Chalet, I thought. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. So. All right, well, guys, uh, let's have a successful week. Hopefully, we're coming at you a week from now, and the brewers are still in first place and have just swept the four game home stand against the Cardinals. That would be awesome. Um, okay. Any final thoughts before we wrap up this one, guys? No, it's, uh, it's great talking some baseball and being a team that's in first place or close to it in uh, in mid to late June. That's pretty exciting. It is kind of weird, like, after the hot start that we had. Um, you know, even right now, we still have the best record of the NL, and we're still in first place in the Central. And I'm like, oh, we're not playing very good. Like, I wish we were better. Like, well, yeah, but if you, you know, if you rolled it back and said, hey, just, just so you know, in mid June, this is where we're going to be. Like, we'd be like, "Are you serious? It's awesome." So, I guess. Well, no, like, I mean, it's a little thing. It, it's, it feels like there's always someone nipping our heels, but I think it would be a much 
you know, it, it would be different if we were like still seven games out of first place, but we were just on a five game win streak. Things would be looking up and we're like, let's go for this. But I mean, we've been in a position of driver's seat basically, it feels for much of last, the first four months of last season and, uh, or whatever it was, the first three, at least three months. Well, no, yeah, four, four months of last season, four months of this season almost, um, or hopefully, um, and, and, you know, that's a good position to be. And hopefully we just don't fall just one game short of the playoffs like we did last year because it's turned to lack of moves. But anyway. Uh, yeah, well let's, be, so. well, let's remember, too, that the Cubs are a very good team. So we're never going to just get this division handed to us. It's going to be a tough race. And I think, uh, like Scott said, if, if we would have known at the beginning of the year that we were going to be in this position in June, I think all of us would have taken it. So it's something to keep in mind is the long view on these things. It's really easy to get frustrated by a series here and there and, I'll be the first to admit this latest Philadelphia series was pretty aggravating to me. I thought we should have won two out of three. But um, that being said, you know, all in all, it's, it's not too bad, especially against two very uh, good other teams in this division. Absolutely. All right. Well, make sure to tune in later this week for another podcast where we'll go through our Rap 9 questions and have some other stuff going on. So until then, um, stay classy, you know, Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, stay classy, Milwaukee. Go Brewers. Go Brewers. Go Brewers. Baseball.